family, it's your sis Lisa. I hope you're doing well. Happy New Year. This is the first video of 2022. I am excited and honestly guys, so I set my goals for the new year and I looked at a few of my goals and I was like some of these are repeats. Some of these have been on the list for a year or two. A lot of them are new, but some of these are repeats. So I was like, God, like, I don't wanna do this again. I'm not going into the cycle again of like starting a goal and then not necessarily finishing it and all that good stuff. So. I was praying and thinking about, okay, like, what do I need to do? So, currently on a fast. I know a lot of people are on fast with their churches right now, so I'm on a fast too. And part of it was, like, I just want to read more, cut out distractions, and read things that are actually beneficial to me, you know? So, I was watching an interview with Sarah Jakes Roberts. We all know I love her. And she was like, oh, yeah, this book, Atomic Habits, is really good. So I literally had Atomic Habits on my bookshelf because my therapist, when I was going to therapy, told me to read it, but I didn't get around to it. I bought the book, but I just didn't read it yet. So I was like, you know what? That's two people who I really trust and are influential in my life who have told me to read this book. I'm gonna read this book. And honestly, it has been changing everything. So Atomic Habits, I don't know if y'all can really see it, Atomic Habits by James Clear. And I'm excited to talk about how I've been pairing that with my faith and how it's been incredibly beneficial. So let's get into the video. So I know your first question is, what is an atomic habit? Like, what does that even mean? So you know how atoms are like small pieces? It's basically getting like 1% better in different areas of your life and staying consistent with that 1% to yield lasting results. This is kind of like a slow and steady wins the race kind of approach, which is kind of good and kind of great because for me, I've realized when I try to quit things cold turkey, like when I'm just like, I'm not gonna do this thing or I'm not gonna do this, I'm not gonna do that, or I'm going to do this and it's a drastic change, like for me, it doesn't stay effective. Like it doesn't, the results don't last. I get tired because I've gone too hard too quick, stuff like that. So for me, this has been a great way to just like kind of like slow down, take it one step at a time. And once I master that first step, I plan on moving to more steps. But it's a great way to actualize your goals without having to attack it hard at the beginning. And then you're in a place where you can't manage all these things you're trying to do at the same time. So. I want to get into kind of how that works and what that looks like when you're actually thinking about your goals. So one thing I realized from reading this book is that like it's great to have goals set and goals in place. However, you need systems to achieve those goals. So I kind of knew this, but the way these systems have kind of are spoke of is like, again, that 1% change where it's like one step at a time. Like what are you going to do that you can do consistently either every day, however so often you set the habit whatever it is, but what can you do that's going to get you closer to your goal that you can actually do, like actionable steps. Like, I'm going to do this at this time on this day. Like actual systems in place for you to succeed. And when you start creating those systems, that's when you get into the concept of identity. And I really think this one is where I was like, God, what's good? Like, that's when I really was like, God, how are we gonna do this? What does this look like? Because I ain't gonna hold y'all. The only person I trust to tell me who I am is God himself, the, ma the one who created me. You know what I'm saying? He's the only one I'm going to be like, so what? who do I need to be to accomplish this goal? What does that look like? And it's crazy because as I was reading, the day I read this chapter, Sarah Jakes Roberts preached a sermon about, you know, changing your identity to change your life. And I was like, look at God and his alignment, his perfect timing. We love to see it. He's amazing. So of course I'll link that sermon below. So basically you need to become a different person to achieve a lot of your goals probably. Because honestly, transparently, if you are already that person who achieves those things, you probably already have it. So what do you need to change in order to get there? And that's not saying you need to change your whole personality, just how you think about yourself. You know, the Bible says, as a man thinks, so is he. So if you're thinking like, man, I can't do this thing, you ain't gonna do it. I also saw another sermon that I'll link below that was really helpful to that. It's called Occupy, and it was so good. It was just like, people see you the way that you see you. Your goals see you the way that you see you. So you have to redefine who am I, what does that look like? So for example, I went through all my goals and I just was straight up like, okay, who do I need to become to accomplish these things and what do those systems look like? So I'm gonna break it down for you guys with my goal of wanting to get down to a certain size, right? So I've had this goal for a minute. This is one of the goals that was on the list for a minute 
And I was just like, okay, who do I need to become to get there? Because it's not that I don't want it, because I keep putting it down on my list. It's that, what's, like, what's the issue? What's the beef? Where are we at, right? So I decided, okay, in order to achieve this goal, I need to decide that I'm a person who is committed to a healthy lifestyle. Like, I'm committed to my health. And then when it comes to anything I do, like, hmm, I kind of want to go eat out. Mm, but maybe I shouldn't because would me as a healthy person probably wouldn't do that. Eat at this specific place. Or I'll order something in a smaller portion. Or order something different than what I would really order if I went to a restaurant. Just what would a healthy person do? Like, you know, like, WWJD, what would Jesus do? What would a healthy person do? That's what I have to think of in that moment because that is who I am. That is who I want to be. That is who I am claiming I am. That's who God told me I am. That's who I need to become. So, I am committed to a healthy lifestyle. What does that look like in any choice that I make, in anything that I do? And maybe even means I got to block certain people out of my life because I'm, comm I'm committed to holistic health. We're not just talking about a size. You know what I'm saying? I'm committed to mental health, emotional health, physical health, all the health. I'm committed to it. So what does a healthy person look like in that mindset? And then you start to create systems to accomplish that. So a system I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the gym at least three times a week instead of just one time a week. You see how that's kind of like that 1% improvement where it's like, okay, I'm not going to say I'm going to go to the gym every day off rip because that's not sustainable for me who only actually makes sure as I go one time a week. I can bump it up to three times a week, you know, and then gradually once I get used to that, maybe then I'll feel like, hey, I actually do want to go every day because he talks about once you start doing something, you set a system for it and you set a course of reaction for it, then you start to feel like, okay, I can do this more often. Or, hey, I kind of, whenever I do this thing, I kind of feel like I want to do that. So you start getting an itch to want to do the thing more. It's really fascinating because it's basically like understanding how your brain works. But anyways, so that's what you do. Set systems in place to just get 1% better. And there are a lot of other systems and tactics I have that I'm going to engage in. Um, but that's just an example that I wanted to share. So, highly recommend that you guys go on and get you this book, Atomic Habits. I'm going to be honest with you guys, I'm what, I'm what, like chapter four or five, and I already feel like I can share this with you, and already I'm growing and I'm doing better. So, I can't wait to keep reading the book. He's going to, he's really breaking down some more practical steps throughout the rest of the book, so I'm really enjoying it and just putting more, like, thought into what I do, adding more intentionality into who I call myself. What does that look like? The habits I have. I'm the type of person who I feel like I'm so scattered that I don't have one set of habits. But I'm realizing that that's not exactly true. So that's nice to, you know, be more self-aware, you know, and things like that. So I'm really excited to finish this book and get more into it. I'll probably share more throughout different videos and just be like, oh, I read this book. And it'll come up more. But this one, I, th I just wanted to dedicate this video to y'all to check this book out. Um, and also just some tips that if you can't get the book, you can't purchase the book, you know, you have some tips to really start getting towards your goals. And with God, because this is not a biblical book, it's just a self-help book as it were. And I don't, this may be the first self-help book I've read that's not faith-based. And I was like, well, God, how are we going to do this? He was like, I'm in everything. Like I can just, we can talk. You don't have to have someone else talk to me for you and then you get it. Like, so I've been able to apply my faith and this book together. It's been a really fun process. Another book I want to recommend, recommend that you guys get is this, 100 Days of Believing Bigger. Y'all, first of all, how cute is she? I love this thing. Um, I've been doing it every morning. There was one morning I didn't do it because, you know, just having a devotional in general. It's not really about this book as much as having a devotional, but I really like this one. But having a devotional, having your time with God every morning is so important. There was one morning I didn't do it. The day was off. She was emotional all day really not, you know, conforming to the ways of this world, not in her heavenly mindset. It was bad. So I was like, you know what? We learned our lesson, didn't we? Take a moment. Wake up early enough to sit and do a devotional. So I highly recommend this one. It's super cute. I'll turn to a page I haven't gotten to yet. But yeah, it has like, oh, you can't really see it. But on one side it has, you know, like a prayer a little space for you to fill it out, like all the good stuff for you to see a devotional, a uh, little scripture. So highly recommend these two books have been my morning routine. Wake up, do a devotional, pray, spend my personal time with God, read this for a little bit, whatever I gotta do, 
and I've been really enjoying that combo. So highly recommend it as we get into this new year and see what God has for us and take on everything God has for us. Um, I'm so excited for you guys. I'm praying for you guys. Leave a comment below with a prayer request or you can message me on Instagram with a prayer request. I'm really into praying for people nowadays just because I really feel called to pray for the people who I feel are call I'm called to and really want to help. So if you have any prayer requests, let me know. If you have any thoughts about this year, let me know. If you want to share something, one of your goals are, I would love to hear that. Again, message me on Instagram, comment below, whatever you want to do. I pray this video was helpful to you. Um, again, check out these books. I'll have Amazon affiliate links below so you can check them out. And yeah, I love you guys. I appreciate you for watching. Bye!